Most people don't know this, but the Bible tells us exactly why the gifts of the Holy Spirit have, for the most part, perished from the Christian age. What are the gifts of the Holy Spirit? 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 27 to 31 says, Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. So where are the miracle healings? Where are the other workers of miracles? Where are the speakers of tongues and interpreters of tongues? Where are the prophets? We can see this in the past. For example, in Acts chapter 21, verse 9, which says, And the same man had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. And we also see in Acts chapter 19, verse 6, wherein it says, And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues, and prophesied. So why have the gifts ceased? The Bible tells us plainly. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Now this might not be so apparent at first, but allow me to explain. You see, God does not bless disobedience. In Lamentations chapter 1, verse 8, we read, Jerusalem hath grievously sinned, Therefore she is removed. All that honored her despise her, because they have seen her nakedness. Yea, she sigheth and turneth backward. What is sin? 1 John chapter 3, verse 4 tells us, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18 told us, Happy is he that keeps the law. And that is connected with vision. Because Jerusalem had sinned, as seen in Lamentations chapter 1 verse 8, what then do you suppose happened to the gift of prophecy? Lamentations chapter 2 verse 9 tells us, Her gates are sunk into the ground, he hath destroyed and broken her bars. Her king and her princes are among the Gentiles. The law is no more. Her prophets also find no vision from the Lord. Because Jerusalem had grievously violated God's law, her prophets found no vision from the Lord. It was not the kind of breaking the law wherein you confess your error and repent. An example of this would be getting really angry at someone and saying some things that you shouldn't, only to come back around later and apologize and ask for their forgiveness for doing such a thing. You would then strive to never do something like that ever again. It is not this type of violation of God's law that the prophets found no vision from the Lord. It was the type of open rebellion, properly known as iniquity, wherein you do not care about God's law, but do whatever you want, and still might even continue to call yourself God's chosen. An example of this would be knowing that it is a sin to lie, but doing it anyways. And after you do it, you have no thought or care for repentance or for the people you lie to. There is an entire difference of spirit between these two examples. One submits to the Holy Spirit and repents for wrongdoing. The other submits to Satan and refuses to stop what they are doing, despite the fact that it is wrong. The wrong soul makes excuses for their wrongdoing, like, God will never forsake us, or, everybody sins, so why does it matter? Well, the Word of God tells us why it matters. Because in Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, it says, But the fearful, and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. It was this type of sin, you know, their rebellion and iniquity, that took away the gifts from Jerusalem. It is the same rebellion and iniquity that took away the gifts from the Christian church, the same gifts mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 27 to 31. In verse 31, the Apostle Paul tells us to covet earnestly the best gifts. 
and yet will show unto us a more excellent way. Following that chapter is 1 Corinthians 13, the beautiful chapter that teaches us about love, or charity as it is called. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. Following that chapter, Paul says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. Notice the connection between love and spiritual gifts. First, love and then desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. Did you know that Jesus also connects love with the Holy Spirit? Notice what he says you must do first before he sends the Comforter. John chapter 14 verses 15 and 16 If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. You must love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, before God will send to you the gifts of his Holy Spirit and all his spiritual gifts. You cannot just claim to love God, but as Jesus said, keep my commandments if you love him. For 1 John chapter 5, verse 3 tells us, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. And so just like it was in the Jewish age, so it is in the Christian age. The lack of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is because the Christian church, for the most part, has forsaken the commandments of God. What then will lead to a revival of the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Well, the answer is quite simple. Keeping the commandments of God. Speaking of the final times on planet Earth, the book of Revelation says in Revelation chapter 12, verse 17, And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. The dragon, which is Satan, is wroth, very angry, with the woman. And a woman is a church. And Satan went to make war the spiritual warfare that we find ourselves in, with the remnant of the seed of the woman, that is, the only true remaining followers of Christ's church, who have two specific aspects. The two aspects of these followers of Christ line up with everything we are talking about. They, number one, keep the commandments of God, and number two, have the testimony of Jesus Christ. But what is the testimony of Jesus Christ? Revelation chapter 19, verse 10 tells us, and I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren, that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. But the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The law, obedience to keeping all of God's commandments, and prophecy are found with this remnant group of followers of Jesus Christ. Not only has the gift of prophecy been revived, but the understanding of Bible prophecy has also been revived. Yes, you cannot even understand prophecy in the first place if you do not keep the commandments of God. God does not bless disobedience. The commandments of God are essential for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. While the majority of the commandments will be deemed as necessary, not taking God's name in vain, not stealing, not worshipping idols, etc. There is one specific commandment that actually has a prophetic statement in it that shows that it will be forgotten. It is the very commandment that Christians say, you don't have to keep today. But that very same commandment was kept by Christians in the early century, who all had the gifts of the Spirit. What commandment is that? The fourth commandment, which starts with the word, remember, because God knew that it would be forgotten. Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 to 11, tells us, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. History and the scriptures record the following. 
in the first century, we see there is not any city of the Grecians, nor any of the barbarians, nor any nation whatsoever, whither our custom of resting on the seventh day hath not come. The primitive Christians had a great veneration for the Sabbath, and spent the day in devotion and sermons. And it is not to be doubted that they derived this practice from the apostles themselves, as appears by several scriptures to the purpose. The Gentile Christians observed also the Sabbath. The primitive Christians did keep the Sabbath of the Jews, therefore the Christians for a long time together did keep their conventions upon the Sabbath, in which some portions of the law were read, and this continued till the time of the Laodicean Council. From the Apostles' time until the Council of Laodicea, which was about the year 364, the holy observance of the Jews' Sabbath continued, as may be proved out by many authors, yea, notwithstanding the decree of the council against it. Acts chapter 13 verse 42 tells us, And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Hebrews chapter 4 verses 4 and 5 and 9 tell us, For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. That word rest is originally the Greek word xabmatismos, which means a keeping Sabbath. The Council of Laodicea. Canon 16 tells us on Saturday the Gospels and other portions of Scripture shall be read aloud. And Canon 29 tells us, Christians shall not Judaize and be idle on Saturday, but shall work on that day. But the Lord's day they shall especially honor, and as being Christians shall, if possible, do no work on that day. The Bible Sabbath is from Friday sunset to Saturday sunset. Sunday is not the Christian Sabbath. And it is this blatant rejection of the law of God, this iniquity, that has led to the loss of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. There is a difference between the man who breaks the Sabbath and confesses his sin and gets back to keeping it, versus the man who does not care and entirely rejects the Seventh-day Sabbath altogether. Now, was the Seventh-day Sabbath immediately forgotten? No, of course not. We see in the second century, it says that it is certain that the ancient Sabbath did remain and was observed together with the celebration of the Lord's Day by the Christians of the East Church above 300 years after our Savior's death. Note, by the Lord's Day here, the writer means Sunday and not the true Sabbath, which the Bible says is the Sabbath. That means that the Lord's Day is the Sabbath. And that is proven by Scripture. Continuing, this quotation shows Sunday coming into use in the early centuries, soon after the death of the Apostles. It illustrates the apostasy that Paul the Apostle foretold of when he spoke about a great falling away from the truth that would take place soon after his death. And so just like what happened with ancient Israel, and it happened very often, as you can see in the Old Testament, when the strong leaders died, the people immediately began to apostatize. So too, Sunday, as a day of rest, slowly crept into the Christian church. And once the Sabbath was rejected, we see the gifts of the Holy Spirit that marked the times of the apostles vanish. And so as it was said to ancient Jerusalem, so it shall be said today. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. If we didn't have to keep the Sabbath, 
there would have been no need for the removal of the gifts of the Holy Spirit as a repercussion. Those who persist in keeping Sunday holy instead of the seventh-day Sabbath, with the full knowledge of these facts, will receive the mark of the beast. They have chosen to honor an idle Sabbath, the Sabbath of the beast, instead of the Sabbath of the Lord. Revelation chapter 14 verses 9 to 11 says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture, into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. That describes those who receive the mark of the beast. Who are those who will not receive the mark of the beast? By now, I hope you will understand this answer. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. If loving and obeying God is your priority, then please keep the seventh-day Sabbath of God and not Sunday. Do as the apostles of old did when they came together and were in one accord and prayed for the gifts of the early rain, the coming down of rain symbolizing the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Come together with the true followers of the Lord Jesus Christ and pray for the outpouring, the blessing of the latter rain. And be forewarned, because as the scriptures have told us, that false miracles will be seen along with the real in the final times. You must always base your decisions off of who is telling the truth on the word. And the word says plainly in Matthew chapter 7 verses 21 to 23. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Thank you for watching. God bless. Son of man, behold, they of the house of Israel say, The vision that he seeth is for many days to come, and he prophesieth of the times that are far off. Therefore say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, There shall none of my words be prolonged any more, but the word which I have spoken shall be done, saith the Lord God.